Hello again, second time today, but real kind of quick. Welcome to Nisi's World. I kind of want to talk a little Bible study, if that's okay. Um, when I study the Word, I like to write things down as they're being revealed to me. And I just wanted to share with you guys and just have, you know, just a little share moment. And um, I hope you enjoy it. This is just my testimony of the revelations that I get when I uh, interact and have, have my quiet time with God and study Him. So, and it's about the arrest of Jesus. You know, I was on a subject about that a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks ago, and um, my interpretation of this whole thing is uh, very enlightening to me. It keeps me motivated. And I just wanted to share the arrest of Jesus. That was a pivotal event in humanity, first and foremost, and it was recorded in the Gospels, the Bible. So, this study has to do with my relationship with God and how he reveals things to me. Meaning, a lot of times I step into the characters of the Bible so I can understand it, really. As I'm reading it, I get my dictionary out and I just look up words that I might not understand and I kind of want to get a, con a better concept of it. So I become the characters sometimes and they just jump out the pages at me. And um, especially the ones that I really relate to. And Jesus is one of those um, people that I do relate to in some ways. Because I know Jesus knows how I feel. But I also know how um, Jesus must have felt in certain situations as well. And his arrest is one of them. I'm a storyteller, and I do this for my understanding. So I'm a storyteller more than anything. And then I like to share it and give it away. Um, so the arrest. Arrest means the action of seizing someone to take into custody. That would be Jesus. Arrest. A stoppage or sudden cessation of motion that would be Jesus but I also have had times in my life where this has happened to me something happens to your health something happens and it just it stops you here's a few more definitions I found in the dictionary about arrest uh, to stop to halt to end and that would have happened to Jesus. Jesus was coming to the end of his purpose. He was approaching his finished works. Now dealing with his arrest, I began to study the place where the arrest happened, which is Gethsemane. Gethsemane is a garden at the foot of the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem, where, according to the four Gospels of the New Testament, Jesus underwent the agony in the garden and was arrested the night before his crucifixion. It is a place of great resonance in Christianity. Gethsemane appears in the Greek original of the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Mark as Gethsemane. The name is derived from an Aramaic meaning oil press. And I found that very ironic that Jesus would often often customarily visit Gethsemane. Um, I also researched how oil was extracted from the olives, done by pressing. I remember watching a video about this one time, and it was very fascinating, the pressing process. And there's hardly anything left from that olive after pressing did what it needed to do. The Bible says, Jesus was troubled and overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of sweating drops of blood. Three times Jesus prayed that if it were possible, the cup of suffering would be taken from him, but that the will of the Father would nevertheless be done. He had to come to grips with the thought of dying, not really wanting to die because he was fully man. But he was fully God, so he does know how we feel. But he had to come to terms that he had to, he knew his purpose. And uh, he had to, he had to die for us. 
Can you imagine how hard his body was working? First of all, to keep him alive. His imagination and thoughts had to have brought him torture and lots of pressure. The pressing was so violent, I can't even imagine. Such torture, so much so that blood was squeezed and oozed out from his flesh. This is just one meaning I found for the word press. A device for applying pressure to something in order to flatten or shape it or to extract juice or oil. The death of Jesus started way before his death. He had to prepare for that. This was torture to his flesh. Torture meaning to inflict severe pain or suffering on. So, let me tell you about a man named Jesus. A child was born, raised. His sole purpose was to save us. But before the finished works of his plan and his demise, he came to teach us his love, his ways, and how to be kind. Disciples he chose to follow his example, you see, were men and women just like you and me. So here is what Jesus means to me. A few simple words sums it up. Jesus is my prophet, one who inspires and teaches me. He proclaimed the good will of God. He is the prophet, one who speaks for his father. Jesus, the extreme teacher of life, he teaches me. Jesus is my minister. He attends to my needs. Jesus, the ultimate leader, is the vine, the good shepherd. Jesus, the super spreader of love. His very act and communication is love to me. So now, I will lead into a study, or should I say my reenactment in my head, as I tell the story of Jesus' arrest. Walking through sh short passages that will lead to his arrest. And please indulge me, because I have a wild imagination. But I understand the Bible through the movie in my head as I read the words. And I have to relate the word to my real life to get a proper understanding sometimes. This is the relationship I have with God. Okay? We all know that Jesus is the healer. He filled the need to cure disease and heal the sick by means other than conventional medical treatment. Now, side note, I call this the setup of Jesus. When I read the passages of the Bible regarding the arrest, I began to think that maybe Jesus set himself up for his own arrest just by fulfilling his purpose. Not that he wanted to be arrested, tortured, but the purpose of his whole life would ultimately lead to an arrest. If Jesus were born and lived a meager life and brought no attention to himself, I'm sure he could have lived and died an old man, maybe. But he came to earth to give rise to his cause and his purpose and to fulfill God's plan. And as much as I was trying to work myself around to a possibility of Jesus' demise, why did he have to do it? I always had to go back to the book, especially in Hebrews. And he reminded me that he came to replace the law so that I can live. You see, sacrifices was not going to be enough anymore. It was impossible. So God had to manifest himself in human form as Jesus to come through a woman fully flesh. His demise was ordered by his father, and that settles it for me. Everything about Jesus could never have been ordinary. He was no ordinary man, yet he was fully flesh. His good deeds and actions provoked anger, hate, jealousy, and envy to some religious folk and some unrighteous folk as well, the so-called leaders of that time. Jesus knew he could not be ordinary here on earth. No, Jesus was no ordinary love. And he grew into a man that began fulfilling his purpose, teaching his disciples and others how to be good and faithful disciples and servants and live together as one and to spread love 
and spread the gospel, the salvation onto the next generation. The book of Matthews 4 and 23 and 24 says, So Jesus went about all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all of Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments. And those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had palsy, and he healed them. Here's another side note. Jesus was becoming famous, y'all. Can you imagine how the so-called know-it-alls had to be feeling? His very presence and his actions drew attention and fame. And all Jesus wanted to do was to fulfill his purpose. Fame. It means the state of being known or talked about by many people, especially on account of notable achievements. Here's another side note. I can see where jealousy and hate can lead to death because even in these times, it's happening now. There's nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 says, That which has been is that which will be, and that which has been done is that which will be done. So there is nothing new under the sun. Side note, I believe jealousy and envy and hate was the motive for his arrest. And when a crowd gets provoked and riled up, we know where that could lead. We saw this mob early in 2021 on the Capitol steps. There's nothing new under the sun. <sighs> yep. The religious folks, the so-called leaders of that time, were jealous, and they hated Jesus. To them, Jesus had to be arrested, not because of a crime, but because of jealousy and hate, knowing full well there is no cause for an arrest here. They refused to believe who Jesus was. They refused, and some probably did not want to recognize the Messiah right in front of them. Mark 14 first verse two days was the feast of the passover and of unleavened bread and the chief priest and the scribes sought how they might take him by crafty and put him to death but they said not on the feast day lest there be an uproar of the people the arrest occurred shortly after the last supper during which Jesus gave his final sermon and the arrest immediately after the kiss of Judas, which is traditionally said to have been an act of betrayal since Judas made a deal with the chief priest to arrest Jesus. Jesus, a preacher whom Christians believe to be the Son of God, was arrested by the temple guards of the Sanhedrin in the Garden of Gethsemane. Narrative. Here's another narrative. Just imagine what his disciples must have begun to feel. If Jesus were believed to be a criminal, then the 12 disciples, including Judas, would be accomplices in his illegal activities. But what was the illegal act here? And this probably led to the disciples to flee because the very thought of them being prosecuted, they were scared. Gethsemane is a place, a place or occasion of great mental or spiritual suffering. It also was a place where man crushed olives for their oil. This is very befitting that Jesus would choose this place in Gethsemane to pray, to be crushed and tortured, the place of his arrest. Mark 14, verse 27, And Jesus saith unto them, all ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. 28. But after that I am risen. I will go before you into Galilee. 29. But Peter said unto him, 
although all shall be offended, yet will not I. <laughs> Verse 30, And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this day, even in this night before the cock crows twice, you shall deny me three times. Verse 31, But he spake the more vehemently, if I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise also said they all. They all said that. Mark 14, the prayer in the garden. Verse 32, Then they came to a place which was named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took Peter, James, and John with him, and he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch. I wonder what he was wanting them to watch. Maybe for the guards. He had to get himself together. I believe he had to get himself together. He just needed to pray. He had to get his flesh under control and the subjection of peace. I really believe that. 35. He went a little further and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. 36. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. You see there? Right there lets me know that um, sometimes when I want to feel sorry for myself going through something that seems so hard, it's a legitimate feeling, but I can never say Jesus doesn't understand because he truly does. Jesus didn't want to die either. I don't believe he did because he came in flesh. But he was God. So God wanted Jesus to feel what we feel. To hurt like we hurt. To have anxiety and panic attacks like we do in life. Because he was fully flesh. But he knew who he was at the end. So we can never say Jesus does not understand because he does. And it goes on in verse 36 to say, take this cup away from me. And then he says, but nevertheless, not what I want, but what you will. Whew. We have to remember these accounts. These are accounts in the Bible, but we can only imagine all the details that was left out. Like it, this wasn't like a five minute thing. I can just, it probably was like hours and hours that it could have been that Jesus was just, you know, just really trying to get to, get to that place of peace to go ahead and finish the job for itself and so um i believe jesus was begging and pleading that all this could change to go, it could go away jesus was going through a process with the prospect of death he had to go through this process and we also have to go through that process i do believe he didn't want to suffer y'all just like we don't i'm reminded that in first timothy 3 and 16 says and without controversy Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. So you see, Jesus understood hurt, pain, and suffering, torture, and death, just like us. Jesus takes away all my excuses to say, Jesus does not understand. Because he does. He definitely does. And, um, so... Mark 14, verse 41, And he cometh the third time and said unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. It is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. There you go. He came into the Holy Spirit of himself at this point. He wasn't fearful anymore. I don't think he was struggling anymore, but he had to get to that place. 42 rise up let us go he that betrayeth me is at hand and immediately while he yet spake here comes judas one of the twelve and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders 44 and he that betrayed him had given them a token saying whomsoever i shall kiss the same is he take him 
and lead him away safely. Now, can you imagine? Judas wanted that money, but he really didn't want Jesus hurt. He probably really wasn't thinking, that's Jesus. He's not going to allow himself to die. That's why he said, when I kiss him, that's him. Take him away safely. That, that just stood out to me. Like maybe he was thinking Jesus was going to get out of this thing because he is Jesus. Huh, verse 45. And as soon as he come, he goes straight away to Jesus and said, Master, Master. And Judas kissed him. 46. And they laid their hands on him right away and took him. And one of them, 47, and one of them that stood by drew a sword and smote a servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Jesus inter interjected. Jesus answered and said unto them, Are ye come out as against a thief with swords and with staves to take me? He asked them. Like, you know who I am. You came here. In 49, he, Jesus says, I was daily with you in the temple teaching. And you took me, and you, and you didn't take me then. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. We know that. The scriptures do have to be fulfilled. Mark 14, 50. And they all forsook him and fled. All the disciples, they was out. 51. And there followed him a certain young man. This was something when I read this last part. I was like, I never read this part. And there, in 51, and there followed him a certain young man having a linen cloth cast about his naked body. And the young man, man laid hold on him, um, Jesus, and he left the linen cloth and fled from them. He gave Jesus his linen cloth. Like, that was his purpose. Be, show up, leave him the cloth so he can cover himself, and then be out. That just amazed me. A stranger. He was purposed to leave Jesus a linen cloth. It's always a ram in the bush. God made provisions even for that. You see, people, we are the remnants left behind. As God's people, we are to give away something that just might help someone else get through something. So I believe we all know the rest of the story. Jesus was accosted and arrested at Gethsemane and imprisoned thereafter for us all. But Jesus left us all a remnant. He left us the possibility and the hope and chance that we all can be forgiven and be saved to enter into eternal life if we so choose to. So this is the events of the arrest of Jesus Christ. And amen. So I just wanted to share that. I love talking about the Lord. I love studying him. Um... It helps me out. It helps me forget my problems. So thank you for listening. I hope it blesses you. Um, if you have any comments even, I'll, I'll read them. And maybe we can have a little back and forth study. Who knows? But anyhow, God bless you. I love you all. Um, see you next time. Welcome to my world.